There are a couple of challenges. First of all, there's that lower diagnostic confidence in patients that don't have the classic presentation for these disorders. We have this saying, the patients don't read the textbook. They don't always present with this clinically established diagnosis of MSA or PSP uh, or DLB. However, with the advent of biomarkers, and particularly once we actually have tau biomarkers for uh, PSP and, and COB for those four repeat tauopathies, uh, that is likely to change. In fact, the s kind of breaking data presented in abstract form at AAN suggested this skin biopsy technique uh, with the SIN1 test may potentially be useful in differentiating MSA from the Lewy body disorders because it shows a more diffuse pattern of distribution of synuclein in both proximal and distal locations but without the small fiber neuropathy typically seen in the Lewy body disorders. The other important challenge is how do we measure progression? So far in Parkinson's disease, we have an established rating scale, but we don't have a well-established rating scale in dementia with Lewy bodies, and the rating scale that was used in progressive supranuclear palsy, unfortunately, did not uh, show a lot of granularity. There were, were many items that had a floor effect where people progressed quickly on them and then couldn't progress further. So we have working groups within the Parkinson Study Group and the Movement Disorder Society that are working on revising the scale that's used to measure progression of progressive supranuclear palsy. And we have new therapies in the pipeline that are going to be launched back into clinical trials now that we have promising new agents that have shown promise in, in similar neurodegenerative diseases. Unfortunately, there had been several anti-tau antibody therapies for progressive supranuclear palsy uh, that all showed uh, no clinical effect versus placebo in their uh, phase two uh, trials over the last few years. Yes, when somebody has an atypical Parkinsonian disorder or if they have Parkinsonism and now we're discussing the possibility that this is not run-of-the-mill Parkinson's. This is something that we need to introduce gradually over the course of several conversations. Often it's a combination of conversations with me as well as a social worker in my group that helps them come to terms with this new diagnosis because this is a more aggressive illness than run-of-the-mill Parkinson's disease. And the treatments really focus on palliative care. We're trying to alleviate the burden of the symptoms on quality of life. And we can alleviate that burden to some degree for a period of time, but these are progressive disorders and with the atypical Parkinsonian disorders, patients are gonna lose benefit over time. Some patients come to me after reading about or their caregivers have read about clinical trials. And so they express interest about a trial they've read about. Often this is recruiting in another country, not directly relevant at this time. But I encourage them to keep an open mind about participating, but more from a philanthropic perspective with the understanding that mo so far to date, nobody who's participated in a clinical trial for a typical Parkinsonism has benefited directly, but they've really advanced the field so somebody in the future is more likely to benefit from these therapies because of their volunteering. But they shouldn't participate with the hope that they're going to directly benefit. We want them to have realistic expectations of what the role of the current clinical trials are. I'd say the majority of patients, once we give them time to come to terms with the diagnosis, and once they've had time to digest that and think about where, where they are in their journey with this illness and that uh, you know, their, their time on this earth is limited because of this illness, most of them eventually come to that point where they do want to volunteer and advance the field. Not everyone, particularly those who have a much more rapid course than the average patient. Um, those are patients that, that just, they or their caregivers are often too overwhelmed. Um, some people just, anxiety is a, a very big component of the non-motor symptoms of their illness. And in those cases, they feel like volunteering in a study would be, be too overwhelming. And, and we respect that. We, we try to document early on if this is someone that really doesn't want that conversation brought up at, at future visits.